It's a blessing to see each and every one of you tuning in to our virtual service here at Foundation Baptist Church. As usual, we will have a great time in the house of God this morning. Let's begin by singing, He Keeps Me Singing. He Keeps Me Singing. Lift me up and let me stand by 
Woodram. He will lead us in a word of prayer for the service here this morning. Please, let's go to the Lord and let's pray. Father, we thank you through your begotten Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, God. I pray that you continue, God, just put a desire and a love in your people, God. And as this message is recorded, God, just give us a heart to sing and be sincere as we sing, my Lord. And I pray for the man of God, Pastor Shrivnath, as he preaches and as he teaches, God, I pray that you fill him, Lord. Just lead him that he may be a blessing to your people, God. And if there's anyone that is not saved, at the end of the message, God, that they may acknowledge you, God, oh, yes. in their lives. I pray and ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, let's have our next special here this morning. Hope you do enjoy. Down here, my burden's heavy, and the road rough and long sometimes my feet get weary and so so but a brighter day is coming soon I'll step on heaven's shore and I won't have to worry anymore Savior standing at the door, and I'll hear him say, you're welcome, all your cares are left behind, and I won't have to worry anymore. continue watching the services at home and make sure that you're there for uh, our Sunday morning service at 10 o'clock in the morning and our Sunday evening service at 6 p.m. and also our midweek service or uh, prayer and Bible study time uh, at 6 30 Wednesday afternoon. Uh, be sure to join in and watch the virtual service here at Foundation Baptist Church. Thank you. Uh, praise the Lord. Just to ask for some more announcement there, uh, we would just like to say thank you for those who have been giving to the tithes and the offering. Thank you for those who have been giving to Faith Promise. Um, we do appreciate, God do appreciate the work of God still continue. Um, I, I keep saying this, and God's word is always true, and He will bless you accordingly, and um, you continue to give. The Bible says it's blessed to give than to receive. 
I know many of us only want to receive, but I tell you, it's a blessing. It's a blessing to give. And thank you. And uh, if you need to give, uh, make those deposits, you can do so at the Demara Bank. All the information are on the screen. I don't need to go much further to explain the number are there and the account number. You can write a check in the name of the church and you can make those deposits there at the Demara Bank or call the number and we will try to make an arrangement with you um, in, in, in getting those um, in that offering. Amen? And uh, let's continue our service here this morning as we continue to sing unto the Lord. <clears throat> Blessed be the time.
Don't stay away from the Word of God. That is one of my main topics, one of my main themes in my life, in my preaching. Get back to the Word of God. You'll even hear me say it here this morning in the Word of God as I preach. I was thinking, um, you know, uh, a lot of people have, I'm sure many of you have, uh, questions about government and churches. When do we disobey the government? Uh, when, when is it right to, um, to say enough is enough or, you know, the government has gone too far? And uh, there are a lot of answers. And I, I wrote some things down recently. I want to read it to you on, on the um, on online service here. And uh, this, this will answer some question uh, and it will give some answers to the question when should we as Christians uh, follow God's laws instead of man's laws? I mean, we should always follow God's law, but you know what I'm talking about. And uh, it, it may not answer everything in specific, but I think it'll give you some answers as well as it may also raise some other questions as to government and the church. Here's what I wrote. The church is the pillar and the ground of the truth. And that is found in 1 Timothy chapter 3, 15. If you take away the pillar, things will crumble. Amen. If you take away the truth, men will walk in darkness. Amen. That's John chapter 8 and verse 12. The church doesn't belong to the state. Jesus purchased the church with his own blood, Acts 20, 28. It belongs to him. He said, render to Caesar the things which are Caesar's and unto God the things that are God's. That's Matthew 22 and verse 21. Worship belongs to God. Amen? Amen. The state should not meddle with telling the church how to worship. Government was not set up to regulate the manner or method of worship. That area belongs solely to God. Government is to punish evil and protect the good. Amen. According to Romans chapter 13 verses 3 and 4. Closing the good, closing the church and stifling its voice does not, uh, does not protect the good or help to preserve good government. Amen. So you may want to play the broadcast back and look up some of those churches, uh, churches, look up some of those verses yes, and, uh, and read it for yourself. That's good. I was reading a good book here on uh, government and churches and so forth. And the author said this, giving up one's individual's power, giving up one's individual power for the hope of uh, comfort and security has proven to lead only to tyranny. Hmm. They rule through deceit and secrecy. Think of that as in a, in a time we're going through with this coronavirus and the lockdown and shutdown of churches and all of that. And um, just pray, pray that God will see fit to open our churches again. I know a lot of people are struggling spiritually and, uh, and uh, we all struggle in different ways, but especially with the church. You know, the church was made to be a vital, essential part of the equation of society. You Amen. take the church away, and people will never do as well. No matter how spiritual, no matter how good you are, uh, they will, they will, you will not do as good if a church is not in the equation. And, and especially a face-to-face -face assembly, not Amen. just online and not just on virtual church. And thank God for this opportunity to do it this way for now. Amen. Amen. And um, so I want you to take your Bibles and if uh, wherever you're sitting or uh, wherever you're looking at, and wherever you're standing, wherever, uh, I want, to, want you to grab a Bible. Get your Bible. Get your Bible. I encourage you to get your Bible. I'll be pleased if you'll get a Bible and open it to Job chapter 3. I'm preaching out of Job chapter 3 verses 1 
to 14. Job chapter 3, verses 1 to 14. Amen? And uh, verse 14 will be our text verse, the last verse there in our reading. Job chapter 3, verses 1 to 14. And verse 14 will be our text verse for this morning message. And let's read it together. If you have a Bible, I want you to open it up. Job chapter 3. I've been reading, uh, I've been reading the book of Job recently. And so this, uh, when Pastor Ibram asked me to preach, uh, this, this verse jumped out at me. And uh, God brought some thoughts to me. I want to share them with you this morning. I also want you to listen and open your Bible and read Job chapter 3 verses 1 to 14. Verse 14 will be our text. And uh, let's begin. I'm going to read. Just read along with me or follow along with me, if you will. Job chapter 3, verse 1. After this, opened Job his mouth and cursed his day. And Job spake and said, Let the day perish wherein I was born, and the night in which it was said, There is a man-child conceived. Let that day be darkness. Let not God regard it from above, neither let the light shine upon it. Let darkness and the shadow of death stain it. Let a cloud dwell upon it. Let the blackness of the day terrify it. As for that night, let darkness seize upon it. Let it not be joined unto the days of the year. Let it not come into the number of the months. Lo, let that night be solitary. Let no joyful voice come therein. Let them curse it that curse the day, who are ready to raise up their morning. Let the stars of the twilight thereof be dark. Let it look for light, but have none. Neither let it see the dawning of the day, because it shut not up the doors of my mother's womb, nor hid sorrow from mine eyes. Why died I not from the womb? Why did I not give up the ghost when I came out of the belly? Why did the knees prevent me? Or why the breast that I should suck? For now should I have lain still and been quiet. I should have slept, then had I been at rest. Verse 14, our text, notice it. With kings and counselors of the earth, which built desolate places for themselves. And I want to speak to you on that verse right there, especially the last part of it. Uh, building desolate places. And uh, I'm going to pray, and then we're going to have a wonderful special. And so let's bow our heads and pray and ask God's blessings on His Word and on His people and on His church. Father in heaven, we do thank you for the wonderful opportunity we have today to open the Word of God, to read it together, to look at it, to listen to it preach. Thank you, Lord, for our churches. Though they're closed, yes, we, yet we have this opportunity to reach people through the Internet, through online services. And we thank you for that and technology. And Lord, use it to reach lost souls. Use it to reach uh, Christians. Use it, Lord, to get the good news of the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ out into our areas. May it stir our hearts to do more in these days we're living in. Lord, we realize we are at war with the world and the devil is at war with you. And Lord, we know who is the winner, but at the same time, we need your help. So I ask your help as we open your word and preach. Bless your people and bless your church Bless uh, Pastor Abraham and his family and the new baby. And Lord, I pray that you'll continue again to use these, church, these messages that are preached behind this pulpit to stir the hearts of your people Amen. for the truth and for righteousness Amen. in the days we live. Please help us this morning in Christ's name. Amen. Well, as I said, we're going to have a, a wonderful special and then I'll come back and preach to you. Okay? The center of your will is where I long to be. No matter where it takes me, 
no matter where it leads. I'll follow you all the way, your land I'll fulfill. Forever I long to stay in the center of your will. Sometimes it's a mystery I don't always understand Just where you are leading me I don't always see your plan Oh, but as I come to trust you more And to love you I started out with made up mind to one day cross the finish line, pressing toward the mark and for the prize. At times I've had to stand my ground as Satan tried to turn me around, but I will not be hindered by his lies. I'm not, not going to walk away. away. I've, got I've got too, too much at stake and I've come too far to turn back now every battle that i have fought will soon be forgotten i'm trading this old cross in for a crown i can almost hear them cheer me on and see the ones that have reached home they await for us to win this race a banquet like we've never known will be held round God's royal throne. There will be rewarded for our faith. I'm not, I'm not gonna walk away. I've got, I've got too, too much at stake and I've come too far to turn back now. Every battle that I have fought will soon be forgotten. I'm trading this old cross in for a crown, trading this old cross in for a crown. I'm not going to walk away. I've got too much at stake and I've come too far to turn back now. Every battle that I have fought will soon Forgotten, I'm trading this old cross in for a crown. Trading this old cross in for a crown. All right. If you take your Bibles again and open it to Job chapter 3, and we'll go through some of these verses here. Um, as I read some of these verses again, 
I want to make mention uh, of verse 2, verse 6, and verse 14. Verse 2. Uh, let's read that here again. I'm going to read it. Uh, it says here, And Job spake and said, and verse 3 also, it says here, And let the day perish wherein I was born, and the night in which it was said, There is a man-child conceived. You know, um, I think of how I felt as a young child growing up in a drunkard's home. Uh, there were times when I felt like that. I felt like, man, why did I have to be born? Uh, why did I have to be born in this family? Why did my, ha my dad ha uh, have to be a drunkard? Uh, why do we have to suffer all because of all of that? And uh, there were some hard days in my mind and in my heart growing up as a lad. You know, and um, those are hard things. I'm, I'm sure uh, Job is mentioning here all the calamities and the problems that came in his life. And you know the story of Job, how he lost everything in one day. He lost his business. He lost his health. He lost his children. And uh, he lost everything that he was uh, living for and, uh, and everything he was uh, hoping to build on. Everything was lost. And uh, God was not lost. Amen. And yeah. God was not at a loss to help Job. Let me encourage you with that statement. God is not at a loss to help you in this time we're living in. Amen. Verse 6. Verse 6. As for that night, let darkness seize upon it. Let it not be joined unto the days of the year. Let it not come into the number of the months. You know, in this time of the coronavirus lockdown, many people are really feeling lonely, true. Uh, disoriented, lost without a cause. I think of young David on the battlefield. He said, is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? Without a cause to live for life, you know, without a cause to live for, life becomes a drag, hopeless, yeah. purposeless. And uh, a lot of people are feeling like that these days. Uh, let me uh, jump over to verse 14, our text. It says, With kings and counselors of earth, which build, built desolate places for themselves. Um, this verse reminds me of those who are kings. Who are they? Uh, the well-off, but unsaved. And the ungodly. Sometimes you don't have to be a king to feel like that, meaning feel uh, like you're living in desolation. You can be saved like Job was saved, and, and he felt like that. You can build desolate places for yourself. Here's a verse, Mark 8, 36. What shall it profit a man if he shall gain a whole world and lose his own soul? You know, you can gain a lot of the things this world values and yet be desolate, lonely, and unfulfilled. I believe we're living in times where most people are building desolate places for themselves. Now, the word desolate means deserted, unfit for living. It also can mean sorrowful. In today's world, I see a lot of people living empty lives. Amen. They're running on empty. Amen. They got, they go to work, That's but they right. don't like their jobs. They live, but it was more like an existence, not life. Churches and places of worship are closed by the government because of the coronavirus. Virtual online churches, church are not true substitute for the real face-to-face -face yeah. assembly yeah. of the local body of believers. That's right. Let me encourage you. When things open up again, and we hope they do, I hope that you will get back to church. I hope that you will back your pastor. I hope that you will encourage yourself in the Lord and get right. back into the house of God. Yeah. Amen? Let me tell you something. You don't have to build desolate places. You don't have to run on empty. I'm glad to tell you how not to do so 
Uh, and that is from the Bible. In the passage uh, we read from, in the book of Job, how does one build desolate places anyway? Well, let me give you three things. The first thing I want you to see is this. When we prejudge what God is doing. When we prejudge what God is doing. As in what we perceive as bad things that happen to us. I mean, we all have things that happen to us. The good and bad. And when those things come, when those bad times come. When we go through lean times, when we go through things we can't explain, when pain and tear, tears and sorrow come, uh, we feel many times that, you know, something is wrong. Uh, we feel sometimes we don't deserve all what's, what's going on. And uh, that, that is not a good place to start your thinking. Amen. When we prejudge what God is doing, you're going to build desolate places. You're going to Amen. run on empty. Amen. Right. You're going to run on empty. You're going to be disillusioned. Why are all the churches closed? But everything else open. At least that's the way it seems. Why? 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 See the point? Well, look at it. Look at verse 3. Job chapter 3 and 3. He says, um, Let the day perish wherein I was born, that the and the night in which it was said, there is a man-child conceived. What was, what was Job doing? I believe Job was prejudging what was going on. True. Sure. You know? None of us can tell what the future holds and what God has for us. Amen. We do know this. If we serve the Lord, if Amen. we're saved, we're serving God, God says he will bless. Amen. But sometimes we don't always see the blessings, Amen. those That's blessings right. all the time. In other words, there are things that come in our life that will block our view from what God is doing. That's so right. Those are the times the devil will uh, come and uh, uh, make us... Prejudge what God is doing. When you do that, friends, you're going to build desolate places. Places that uh, is not fit for living. In other words, you, you, you won't feel like living. You'll feel like giving up. Your hope will be gone. There's no purpose. There's not a cause to get up and to, to do what you would have normally done when you had something to do, when you had purpose in your life. It's true. And we need to be careful about that. See, when we prejudge what God is doing, we're going to build desolate places. It's good stuff you. There are two things we need to get concerning God, too. If you get nothing else from this message, get this. Number one, God is good. Amen. God is good. That's right. Secondly, God is right. Amen. God is good. God is right. Psalms 115 and verse 3 tells us, But our God is in the heavens. He hath done whatsoever he hath pleased. What God does and what God pleases, what pleases him is always good and always right. Amen. Always. God is always good. God is always right. Amen. You can mark that down and bank it. Psalms 5 and verse 4. Listen to this verse. For thou art not a God... That have pleasure in wickedness. Did you get that? Yes, sir. Psalms 5 and verse 4. For thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness. Neither shall evil dwell with thee. You know, when things are going bad for us, it's easy to start looking out. And then looking up and looking at God and saying, now God, what are you doing? You know, where are you? I'm doing all of this, but I don't hear you. I don't see you. I don't feel like you're with me. Are you sure you're as good as you say you are? Well, Psalms verse five, verse uh, Psalms five, verse four answers that. God doesn't have pleasure in wickedness. Evil doesn't dwell with him. 
God is a good God. Amen. Amen. And He's always Amen. right. Praise the Lord. He's not evil. Now, whatever is troubling you right now, whatever is causing you restless nights, pain, and worry, has a God given plan to bring goodness and righteousness in your life. God is using the things we go through to bring goodness and righteousness in our lives. Yeah. Think of that. Two of the great themes of the Bible, the goodness of God and the righteousness of God. He wants that for his people. He wants that for his children. Amen. Don't prejudge God in what he's doing in your life or in the world as we're living in this lockdown period right now. To get to God's goodness and righteousness and what he has for us, we will have to allow God to work it out for us. Amen. God needs to work it out. You've heard it said so often, God's timing is not our timing. God's plan is not our plan. We must, we must gear our plan and our timing in accordance to God's. Amen. Right? The only way you're going to do that is if you will not prejudge what God is doing in the world, what God is doing in your life, what God is doing in your family, what God is doing in your business, what God is doing with your children, what God is doing in the community, what God is doing in the church, what God is doing in your pastor's heart and his family's heart and the Sunday school teacher and the bus captains and the deacons and all of it, all of it. Don't prejudge what God is doing. God has a plan. It's good. Amen. Amen. That's a hard, it's hard at times. I understand that. Sometimes very hard. But that is the only way to get hope and a cause in your life. Don't prejudge God what he's doing. You'll find if you do that, number one, that your hope factor will start increasing. Hope will start blooming and blossoming, mm -hmm. blossoming again in your life. And you, after a while, with hope, you will find that there's a cause to live and to get up and to go out into the world and be a witness mm -hmm. and to be the kind of Christian you're supposed to be. Even in the days of trouble. <laughs> and you got to understand something. Job had a lot of trouble. I doubt that any one of us probably will ever go through as much as Job did. Job did not know the beginning from the end. I want to you know, Job wasn't a perfect man. You can read the book of Job. He faltered and he failed at times. And certain of the things he, he said. But one thing you can't fault Job for. Though he got discouraged, by the way, you and I probably would have done the same thing. Though everything looked hopeless around him, he still had the teeny tiny idea that there is a God. Amen. He knows what he's doing. Amen. And I'm going to trust him. Amen. Amen. Over and over, he said, I'm going to keep my integrity. Amen. You know what that means, the word integrity? Moral excellence. Job did not accuse God, though he felt like he was, uh, uh, felt like he should not have been born. He felt like, man, why are all, why are all these things happening to me? Job didn't give up on God. He felt like, but he didn't. You and I are going to be tempted too. We're going to feel like, but don't. Don't prejudge God. By the way, can you tell me what happened to Job? Yeah, you know what happened to Job. Job got the goodness of God in the land of the living. That's what he did. In the end, that's how it worked out, didn't it? The same would happen for you and me. The only way to get that hope and, uh, and cause in your life is to continue 
to trust the Lord in these times. Simple enough. But it's not always that easy in our life. God's plan is always good and right. Amen. God's plan is always good and right. So that's the first thing. If you, if you don't want to build desolate places in your life, and then number one, uh, don't prejudge God. Secondly, here it is. This is when we build desolate, desolate places. When we open our mouths to call, curse rather than bless. When we open our mouths to curse rather than bless. I'm not talking about profanity here, but we're talking about finding fault. Right. Finding fault. Being critical. Being cynical of others. And uh, here's what it says. Look at verse 1. After this, Job, after this opened Job his mouth and cursed his day. Well, Job, Job didn't handle everything perfectly when those troubles came. And that's an indication right there. You know, Job, uh, Job faltered a little bit there. And, uh, and you can understand that. But when we open our mouths to curse rather than bless, we're going to build desolate, desolate places in our lives. Places that we feel like there's no hope. There's no light. Uh, we'll feel lonely, deserted. Don't we have people around us? Though we may be getting up and uh, going to work or uh, doing our regular chores or uh, uh, you know, helping to our family, we will feel very lonely, very deserted. And uh, that's a bad place to be. That is when you lose your hope, you lose your cause, you lose your purpose when you start opening your mouth to be critical instead of blessing. Okay? When you feel, listen to this, when you feel that because others don't agree with you, they are lacking, then you are beginning a downward spiral. Good. When you feel like because others don't agree with you, they are lacking, then you're beginning a downward spiral. I'm not talking here about moral or doctrinal issues. I'm talking about opinions and preferences. Hmm. Look, everybody has a right to their opinion, but not all opinions are right. Yeah. Everybody has a right to their opinion. But not all opinions are right. Right and wrong can only be determined by God's word. Amen? Amen. Amen. Our circumstances and feelings are not a good way to determine right and wrong. Amen. Sometimes we want pity. You know. Oh, woe is me. You know. All these things happen to me. I understand we're human. Sometimes we want pity. Pity is a funny thing. The more pity you desire, the more self-centered you become. Jesus did not come to have pity on himself. He came to have pity on others. Note that. Note that. Okay? Right. The best way to live life is to bless others. Yeah. But don't, just get this, but don't hold your blessing as a curse against others who don't bless. I'm going to say it again. The best way to live life is to bless others. But don't hold your blessings as a curse against others who don't bless. Let God determine that. Amen. Once you open your mouth to curse rather than bless, to be critical, to be cynical... Rather than bless and encourage and pray for others. Guess what? You're going to build desolate places. Though you may be good in all different areas of your life. And maybe people looking on might say, man, that person is doing well. But they don't know inwardly you're desolate. You're, you feel deserted. You feel hopeless. You feel uh, you're living life without a cause, without purpose. And God says, no, no, don't open your mouth. Uh, to curse. Don't be cynical. Don't be critical. Open your mouth and bless. Amen. 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 
Building desolate places means prejudging what God is doing. And secondly, cursing rather than blessing. Okay? There's a third way uh, we can build desolate places for ourselves. And let me give it to you. Number three, when we rant and rave about the past that we can do nothing about or change. It's good. When we rant and rave about the past that we can do nothing about or change. Look at verses 3 and 4. Job chapter 3. Let the day perish wherein I was born and the night in which it was said there is a man child conceived. Boy, I, I can see Job starting his rave here. And you can read the whole chapter there. And uh, verse 4. Let that day be darkness. Let not God regard it from above, neither let the light shine upon it. Well, Job jo could not do anything about that. Hmm. He could not do anything about where he was born, uh, in what family he was born, uh, you know, what circumstances he was born in. He could not change that. He could not undo that. Those are the domain of a sovereign God. Oh, yes. But when we rant and rave about the past, that we can do nothing about or change, we will begin to build desolate places. Mark it down. There are people live, uh, living today, there are people listening to me right now. I don't know who you are or where you are. I don't know what you're doing, but I know, that, know this, you are building desolate places for yourself. Wow. You're following some of these uh, downward spiral Things that I mentioned about. And guess what? You have lost your purpose in life. You're running on empty. Hmm. Why? Has God died? Is there not a book? We have. Is there not a bomb in Gilead? Amen. Is there not a savior? Hmm. Is there not lost souls to go after? Come on. Is there not a... Uh, uh, places we can finance a gospel to yeah. go out. Sure. Can we not pray? Can we not read the word of God? It's good. Do we have to be critical of others who don't do it just like we do? Come on. Do we have to be cynical of the goodness of others? Because we don't understand all the facts of what's going on. Amen. Well, I'm just beginning to heat up now, but I got an end. Oh, amen. <laughs> you know, I, I have not preached in three months. So I'm a little rusty, uh, I think. I don't know. I think I am. But I have not opened a Bible to preach in front of an audience in three months. It's the first time. So, but I love it. I love preaching. I love pastoring. I love uh, leading the flock of God. I would have it no other way. It's the best job in the world. And yes, it is hard. It's a great job. Because I have God as my shepherd. Amen? Amen. I'm the under shepherd. Hey, when we rant and rave about the past that we can do nothing about or change, we're going to build ourselves desolate places. I'm thinking of some of the racial riots going around in the world in America and, and we have some of the rumblings here as well. And you know, people want to bring up the past from, from years ago or even hundreds of years ago. Hey, we cannot change the past. That's right. Yeah. God has given us today Amen. to live. Amen. Amen. We got to make a difference in life today. I got to get close to God today. I'm not promised next week. I'm not promised next year. As a matter of fact, I think we're living in the, in the very end of the end of days before Christ comes again. We don't have that long. I'm not going to rant and rave about the past that I can do nothing about or change. We can't change what is going on in the world or what has happened. What I can do is learn lessons from the past and hope I don't repeat the sins of others. Amen? Yeah. I told you, God has a plan and it is good. Get in on it today. Get in on it Amen. today. Amen. There is only one way. Look 
in the book. Amen. Commune with God. Amen. Let Him guide you in the good way. Look, if you're not in the book, you're running on empty. Amen. I'm talking about every day. Yes, sir. If you are not communing with God, you are running with on empty. If you don't understand that God's plan is better because you're not in commune with Him, you're running on empty. We can all rant and rave about what happened yesterday or last week or last year or in times past. Well, we can't do anything about that. I can do something now. Amen. I can see it the way God sees it. I can follow the plan He has. Amen. I can try to get closer to Him Amen. so I can be an influence to those who are not there Amen. yet. Amen. God's plan is better. There's only one way to get to that plan. Look in the book. Commune with God. Let Him guide you in a good way. Do you know Job, in all his trials, finally saw that God was working good in the middle of those trials? Amen. Did he do everything perfect? No. But he was in commune with God. Amen. He was searching his ways and looking for what God was doing. Is it any wonder that he was doubly blessed, doubly blessed in the end? <clears throat> There's a way to get out of this mess we are in. I'm talking about individually now. Don't allow yourself to prejudge what God is doing. Here, what is God is doing? God is using the evil plans of Satan as he sets up his kingdom for the Antichrist soon, to use those plans, turn it around and beat the devil at his own game. Amen. Now that is brilliant. Amen. Because in the end, Jesus wins. Amen. But you know how he wins? He's allowing this thing to this thing to transpire to go on. In his good time, in his good will, in his good plan, he will bring an end to it. He will call all the witnesses in and he's going to say, now Satan, where do you stand? Good. Present your best evidence. You know what Philippians says? When all the evidence is in and all the laugh, those who laugh at God and mock God and the scoffers, you know what the evidence finally comes out to be? Every knee shall bow. Amen. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue will confess. Amen. Amen. Do you think Satan will? I believe he will. I think Lucifer will. But it'll be too late. It'll be too late then. Now is the day of salvation. Praise now is the accepted time. I'm not talking about Satan. He already made his choice. I'm talking about you. Yes, sir. I'm talking about me. I'm talking about us. Now we need to say, hey, enough is enough. I can't change my past, but I can get in. I can cash in on God's plan today. Amen. I'm not going to rant and rave what I can undo. Do what Job did. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding and all thy ways, the psalmist said. <clears throat> Acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. It's not the psalmist, that's, that's Proverbs. Solomon wrote that. Now, uh, don't you allow yourself to prejudge what God is doing. You and I don't hold all the facts. Amen. You and I do not hold all the facts in our hands. We cannot know everything what's going on. God does. Allow God to work in your life. Amen. God holds the facts. Let blessing, not cursing, flow from your mouth. Thirdly, don't rant and rave about the past that you cannot undo. Search for what God has for you to learn from the past. Get into His Word. Talk to Him. Not to make 
<clears throat> not to make yourself more important, but to make yourself more holy. Encourage your pastor, support your church, encourage the brethren. God is doing a work, but let him work. Don't prejudge him. Amen? Thanks for listening this morning. And I want, I want you to make some serious decision for God this morning. Okay? Let's bow our heads and pray. I just told you from the Word of God how you can make it in the days we're living in. Father in heaven, I pray that you use this message this morning to touch the hearts and lives of your people who are saved. I, I pray this morning there's somebody here, Lord, listening who do not know you as Savior and that you will work in their hearts. They can call some of the phone numbers there on the screen and a counselor can talk to them personally about their soul salvation work in the hearts of those who are listening this morning. I don't know who will listen to this, but you know. And if there's someone who is listening without Jesus and do not know for sure you would go to heaven, would you call right now those numbers, any one of those numbers, and talk to a counselor? And if you get a busy signal or if you, if you don't get an answer right away, call back later. Somebody will answer. If you're here this morning and you're saying, you listen to this message, you say, Preacher, you know, many of those things you mentioned really touched a part, a, a, a vein in my, in my life. And if that is your prayer, would you ask God to help you with that right now? Wherever you are, silently, in your own words, in your own heart, at your own home, wherever you're watching, wherever you're hearing me, wherever you might be, ask God to touch you right now, to encourage you to, to, to start seeing it the way He does. Would you take a moment and do that right now? Even as I'm talking, do that right now in your heart. Father in heaven, we do thank you again for what you're doing in our lives in these days. I don't know all what you're doing. And Lord, as I look out, it looks it looks pretty awful. It looks pretty bad. But Lord, I also know that you have a plan and you're doing something. And just like in Job's life, he did not know the end from the beginning. But uh, he kept trusting you. And Lord, he was not perfect at it, but he kept trusting you. And Lord... I pray that you help us all to see that you have a good plan. You're a good God. You do everything right. And you will use your goodness to bring that to us as well. And so help us. Bless those who are listening. And Lord, give us a wonderful day today and the rest of this week and even back tonight in our service. In Jesus' name, amen.